like Mrs. Doubtfire doing that, but um, I thought this week I should do another video blog. And uh, I was, I, what inspired me was Nikki, the woman who sent me those beautiful flowers that uh, they, they lasted for such a long time. I don't know where they came from, but they were really good flowers. And inspired me for my Emmy weekend, so that was exciting. Um, but anyway, Nikki sent some questions, and I thought I'd give a shot at um, trying to answer them. So, here goes. Uh, you know, difficult people. It depends on my mood. <laughs> no. I mean, generally, and the advice I give to my children is kill them with kindness. And maybe confront them with what's going on. Which well, That's what I tell my kids to do. Whether I have the nerve to do it is another story, but... I mean, really call people out sometimes, I think, kind of shuts them up, actually, in a kind way. But I usually try to approach it with kindness. But, boy, there are some things that really get me going, and I can get my, you know, my hair all up and be a little biting. I don't think I'm ever nasty, but I, can, I could at least stand up for myself. But, you know, it's a funny thing because my mom being from the South and the yes ma'am, no ma'am, children be seen and not heard, I have to say the hair on the back of my neck stands up a little bit when I ever, like, really confront people. But... Um, I try to kill them with kindness. Uh, no, I haven't. But part of the reason the blog was started was my daughter telling me that I should do something like this to pass on my advice or my information. So I suppose Plank, because it is a platform for inspired living, is all those things. So not really going out and uh, putting a, like a show together with that, but you know, as I as I'm sitting here thinking about, it, I'm thinking, you know, life is about a thousand reinventions, and my next unemployment uh, spiel, maybe that'll be my next thing. I'll be a motivational speaker. So thank you for the tip. Okay, I'm gonna remember that. Optimistic. Well, I think professionally, I just want to keep working. That's all I care about. Just keep working. That's all I ever cared about. I just, I never, I never had these big dreams of being a movie star. I just wanted to keep working. So, I hope that happens. And I, I kind of joke when people say something about retiring. I'm like retiring, like I don't know what I would retire from. So, I want to be where's the beef grandma. Remember those old commercials they used to do that where's the beef grandma? I just so work. I just hope that I always find some acting work. Maybe it'll be in. Uh, the theater uh, or as a grandma. I don't know. I mean, I just hope I keep working. And personally, it's like my husband just had his birthday and people were saying, what did you wish for? You better make it good and all that. And I think he said something about it just for good health for all of us or something. And I think that's the key. Because I think these next, you know, I'm, I think I'm just hitting my stride. This is a great time in my life. Really incredible. But health is it. Health is 100% going to drive it. I, I think I would pick Lucille Ball in the I Love Lucy show because I have seen interviews with her as she got older. Uh, just recently, I saw it was, it was a thing on Desi Arnaz or something, and um, she was just so, you know, you know, kind of barking at people and her cigarettes and whatever. And I was like, well, that person doesn't really, that would not be a person I'd want to necessarily have lunch with, or, you know, I, mean, I would if she asked me, but it wouldn't be like she's. But, the character of Lucy and that funny and all that, um, that would have been fun because I adore her. I'm a big fan. So. I think it changes all the time. When I was a little kid, I thought I would be a couple different things. Then there was there was something uh, when I was like, I remember my early 20s, I wasn't getting acting jobs, and I thought, maybe I'll go be a paramedic, like a, or a, you know, which would probably be an ambulance driver, really. But But then I thought, Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe not. There's a lot of lifting and stuff. And then, uh, but it ever, it's always changing. But when I had my kids, it was the labor delivery nurse who was like a mama. My gosh, I love that. You know, you just like, I love you. Um, the nurturing. I like, I mean, I'm a nurturing person, so that would be probably a good career. But even now, I, I endlessly think, I, you know, what, what will be my next uh, regular job because this acting thing. I mean, I hope to keep pursuing it, but especially daytime, a regular gig, which is what I love. If that ends, what will I do? But my husband has this med spa, so I think, well, maybe I'll be a facialist or maybe, you know, so I, I still am always thinking. 
So, I always want to flip houses. So I don't know. I don't know what will be next, but um, I guess we'll see. I'll get back to you. Well, I'm sure I could say I do, but I tell everyone, and I do live like this, I don't think there's room in your life for regrets. And I, I tell that to everybody. My, I mean, my husband says something about, oh, I regret I did this, or I got rid of that, or I didn't do this. And I'm like, what does it matter? I mean, I really think regrets are in the past. It's not the way we're going. We're going forward. We can't look back. And I just don't really, I honestly don't live my life like that. I don't think that way. I don't pine that. In fact, I, I did read something, I wish I could remember the guy's name, but I did read something about getting older that it's the people who regret or they lament that they can't do this certain thing anymore. They're the people who actually struggle with aging. That if you say, I'm a, say I was a dancer, you know, whatever, and I couldn't do that anymore, then I can't say, oh, uh, I, can't, uh, I can't do that anymore. It has to be like, well, what can I do now? And so I have to reinvent myself with what I can do now and get good at that, whatever that is, and make that my goal, and forget about that. That was then, that we did that then, and I mean, I used to be able to jog. I used to do 10Ks at 4th of July. Oh, I can't even imagine, it would hurt my knees now, so I don't do that. But I found Cardio Bar, which I love, and it's low impact, and I do that. So I think it's just about um, keep looking forward, because that's the direction I'm going. Um, I think it's really interesting. I was just talking to somebody about this this weekend because I think your senior year, well, all of high school, and actually your whole life with your child from the beginning on is a series of letting go. It's That's what it is. It's from everything. I used to say to my kids, like, you don't understand. Two seconds ago you were like, Mommy, watch me. Mommy, Mommy, are you watching? Kiss my boo-boo. Kiss my boo-boo. To then it's like, don't don't look at me. Don't talk to me kind of thing. And I think the senior year is just, it, it, it's, the, it's, it's the blossoming of that. It's the explosion of that. Of, of fighting for their independence and letting go and um, it's funny I used to make this sandwich for my youngest son and he was like three years younger so he was home for three years after everybody had gone to college and he was a water polo player he was a big athlete so I, I, I for me it was all about the food and making sure he had the food and and sort of together we, we created this sandwich that was like ciabatta bread and, and it had I think it had some guacamole and pesto and turkey and mayonnaise and mustard and it was this crazy lettuce tomato this crazy sandwich that I would wrap in parchment like it was from the deli it was a whole big thing and I really got known for this I mean other moms would say oh my son told me your son has the most amazing sandwich and what's the sandwich and I mean I took such pride I mean it was really like I was taking such good care of him because I made the sandwich and then he started doing just crappy things in, in that like the last six months of his senior year and he was, you know, losing privileges and these different things. And then I got, you know, something had happened. And I was like, and you know what? You're not doing that anymore. And you're not doing that. And I will not be making you that sandwich anymore. I mean, I was totally crying. <laughs> so ridiculous. But it represented so much. And I had to let it go. And it was all just letting go, letting go. And um, then he, the, he very first started college. And he called me and said he forgot something. He, he, his college was like 15 miles from my house. And I swear, I was like, well, I'll be driving right by for today, so I don't mind driving that off. And I dropped it off, and I saw him. He came down in the dorm, and I, I like, hugged him, and I got so choked up. And I just kind of said, okay, I'll see you later, you know. And I turned around, and I walked, and I, was, I almost felt like, okay, I'm getting off my life, and you get off your life. And it was, you know, good. And so much of it is that we need to have our own life. We need to have our own relationship with our husband. My husband and I were always super good about... Uh, Saturday night dates. We did Saturday night dates our entire uh, rearing of our kids. We had this little babysitter next door, this young girl who told us we needed it, and we were like, we do? And we went with that, and we did that forever. And then as they got older, we went out every Friday and Saturday night, the two of us. And then we said to our kids, but Sunday night's our night, and we always met at this one Mexican restaurant and had um, dinner on Sunday nights as a family. And we still do that a lot. Not there anymore, but they want now sushi. They want like healthier things, but um, I think, one, you got to have your own life. That's the hugest, hugest thing. Your own interests in your own life. And um, you have to just accept that letting go is really part of it. And honestly, that's what's, what, were, what were we in for, right? What, what, why did we even do it? I mean, I, it's a little bit of a trick because they make those babies so cute and we all want a baby. But they all grow up and they all go through these kind of ugly times. And we have to, we have to know that that's natural and that that means we've been successful and 
it's hard, but I think that's it. But the attitudes, when I see that even with kids now, I'm just like, oh boy, I'm glad it's not me anywhere. So good luck if you have that problem. But it passes and then they come back and they're really great people. Like my kids are all so sweet now, but it, they weren't always. So hang in there. Yes, I do. Yeah, and a lot of times I say yes, and then I think if, if. Mainly, I think I just, as, you know, at this time in my life, I, I work a lot, thankfully, and who knows how long that'll last, but so then on the weekends or anything else, I just kind of want to hang with my man and do nothing else. Yes, I say yes. I often think, why did I say yes? And then I'm always happy when I do it. That actually is the truth. And then I'll be like, oh, I don't know, why did I say yes? And then I go do it, and then I think, well, this was pretty fun, I'm glad I said yes. So that's kind of really the pattern for me, I think. <laughs> Brief. When I was in the dressing room, I mean, of course, no one, because Stephen's my man forever, you know that. But um, I was in the dressing room one day, not in the dressing room, in the in the makeup room, and it was the day that Rafe. They're in there. They're in like Hope's house, and Rafe. They're kind of you know, whatever they do, toying with. Uh, we're kind of attracted to each other, and I think that they walk out to the porch or something, and he grabs her and he kisses her. And I was in the makeup room going, holy smokes. And when he came off the thing, I gave him a whole big deal about, oh, my God, the way you kissed her. Oh, you know, I love that. I love that when guys just like, take ya. So I'll just say Rafe today because I just love that moment. I don't know about any more than that moment, but I love that when they just take ya. Rawr. Then we kissed. Um, well, I, I imagine when we did the deaf storyline, because we were, you know, we, we had a, a, a teacher come every single day and go over our scripts with us. And not that we necessarily learn to be conversational sign language people, but we learned every word that was in our scripts. So it was sort of an upside down way to do it. But, um, and then we, and then, and then Benji, we, you know, he was deaf. And then we did a lot of uh, appearances at the time and raised money. And that did make some impact. So I would say that probably was the one that carried over the most. This is kind of how it usually rolls, especially with Stephen. We will we run everything to death because well, one the show goes so fast, you basically step out there and shoot it. So if we don't work on it in our dressing room, it's still it's clunky. You can't do it. If you want rhythm or anything, you got to do that. Especially at those kind of scenes with us, but. Um, we have found that even if even if there's a period where we don't agree with the story, if we 100% commit to it, that's it. That's all you can do. We have to 100% commit, and it seems to work out better. It seems to. It seems to. I mean, what else can you do? Because if I don't believe it, you're not going to believe it. And um, there's been times when I've been really idealistic and thinking, oh, that would never happen, or I couldn't do that, or whatever. And then I've been out of a job. So I think we know that part of what part of our job is to make sense of whatever we're given. So if it's something that's so, super out of character or whatever, we'll go to somebody and ask them and say, you know, we don't think that that's right. And I, um, so we try to commit, and if we can't make it work, we'll go talk to somebody. And then they usually fix it. Yes. No, actually, I, you know, I love working with him. And I think that, I, I, you know, I follow, I've said this before, but the Patch and Kayla Instagram, I love that because it, I, every day I get like a little clip of some old scene that we did, which I don't remember at all, really, most of them. And I just, I just love that. And I love his bravado and his, you know, his cover and everything he had before and his swagger. I love that. And um, I could live without my airy, I'll stay. I could live without that, but... Um, I am a fan of this couple. I'm a fan of them. I want them to be happy. I think we connect better than anyone I've ever worked with on daytime, and I, he says the same thing. And um, and we have a good time, and, and we and we also have a really good work ethic. And we we just sit together and uh, we run lines and stuff. And he'll say, like that doesn't sound like real English, and he'll look the look it up for me and tell me, oh yeah, no, this is what's really written because I'll just skim it sometimes. Or we'll say, yeah, don't say that. Let's, why don't you do it like that? Or why don't you grab me and do that? Or why don't we... So we're very free about giving notes to each other without being insulted or think the other person's being bossy or whatever. So 
we just work really well together, so I enjoy that part. But I had fun with Finn on the show, which is every now I think, but he was fun. He was really fun. I like him too. I think maybe more, I, I, I would like it to be more, uh, it, it might be headed that way, to be more um, interpersonal things, like more uh, problems from the heart than exterior problems of a shootout or a kidnap or a whatever. Like, I, I would like it to be something that might be a little more uh, from the heart, you know? And I think in the old days, I guess there's always been this part, but there's more characters on this show that, or on all the shows, where they sleep around and they do all these different things, and, and that wasn't the way it was before. It was more your couple had a problem from something else, but it wasn't that. It wasn't about people cheating on each other. Anyway, so. I just think, let's do stories from our heart and more about our heart. I like that stuff better. Thank you again to Nikki for sending these. And listen, we love doing these. So send in your questions and um, every so many whatever, weeks, months, whatever, whatever, we will take time out to um, sit down and chat it up with you. And hopefully we'll have an event or we'll do something soon. And I know for no November we're going to definitely do an event. So... I want people to come out and hopefully we'll get like a, one of those great breakfasts or something in too. We can get a chance to, to catch up. Okay, everybody. Thanks. I said hello.